to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. I, I remember this story now to my shame. Years ago, I wanted to know the secret behind very wealthy people. And every time I got materials, all they were talking about was belief systems and traits. And I felt they were very wicked and unfair. What business are you doing for God's sake? What are you selling? What are you buying? Don't tell me behave well, understand honor, understand relationships. What do I, I mean, we have, we have, this is Africa. We have serious issues. What time do I have to learn? Really? Imagine that you meet me and I tell you, I'm on a journey to prosperity. So what are you doing now? I'm learning on relationships. <sighs> Your father will look at you and say, much learning makes thee mad. But how foolish I was. They were giving their best. If we have time, by the grace of God, we'll discuss two riches. The capital that buys money. That money itself is a product. The name of the capital that buys that product is two riches. And that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is money, a day will come where everybody around you has the same thing. At that point, your relevance climaxes and you will never go beyond that realm. You can only use money when there are people around you who need it. But you will get to a realm where nobody around you needs money. You will need to bring another kind of currency. Many people never get blessed enough to get to that realm. So their entire theology of wealth is just cash. But believe me, there is a realm where money does not matter because everybody there has it. You don't sell air because it's available. So if you have a business that you're selling air, I don't mean the one in the hospital, just air to people who are alive and wealthy. You have to bring another kind of product. Hallelujah. There are seven currencies that we use to transact with in this life. The least of them is money, as you know. So I pray that God will grant us grace and will discuss it in the name of Jesus Christ. So that when you leave church, you can leave church, even though trekking, you'll be laughing like a madman. And ignorant people will say, something has happened to you. Have you taken the job and you say, I wouldn't love this much if all I got was a job. I've gotten what is greater than a job. I've gotten the capital that buys money. You believe what I'm telling you? Listen, you will walk out of this conference and you wonder the ignorance of the people on the street based on what, and to know you were like that before you came to church, you will thank God for church for the rest of your life. Now you will understand what it means when the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There is something in the house of the Lord that is not found anywhere else. This is what the Bible calls the power to prosper. God gives you the capital that buys money and says go. And he's sure that you will return back rejoicing. And you will play life like a chess. And you will watch men and women pay for their ignorance. And you will thank God for God. You will thank God for your pastor. You will thank God for your leaders. And you will quickly gather your children to say, I found something. Let me show you. Here is a key. Mommy, when are we going to get the money? And you say, no, I don't hate you that much. Let me teach you what is better than money. That brings you money. True riches. Never forget this. Just the title alone can bless you. The capital that buys money. 
Money is a product. There is capital that buys it. But that's not even where we are going. Can you imagine we are still defining terms? This is spiritual prosperity, then mental prosperity. The third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity. Your health and your physical well-being. Your health and your physical well-being. Your health and your physical well-being. Health is wealth. It's a true statement. Health is wealth. There are millionaires and billionaires today whose money cannot do them much because their health is so deteriorated. Let me tell you this. You have a responsibility to take care of this body that your spirit lives in. The reason is because there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to remain in this body. If your body deteriorates beyond that level, the spirit will have to live. A body has now prepared bodies are prepared they don't just it is your responsibility to keep the body prepared so that you can do much for the kingdom this is prosperity we deteriorate our health we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and then at the end of it we are giving naira and kobo and a few dollars and pounds and then we find out that these things do not have the power. We traded, we blame Esau and Jacob, and yet we make the same mistake every day. When you give your health just for money, that's the same thing you did. Health is very important. I have the privilege to pray for people. I pray for the sick all the time. And I am amazed, Pastor, at how helpless money can look like in the money is only useful when there is a professional who can administer something about your health but when the doctors tell you i'm sorry you have a week to go you hold all the money and see how powerless and valueless money is ask a dying man what is your greatest request he will not say a bank a lot give me time the gift of health extend my life hezekiah said health is very important if you are healthy, it is a blessing from God you should cherish. In Africa, I'm told that the lifespan is 48 years. We reject that result in the name of Jesus. But statistically speaking, that if you are 48 years in Africa, they begin to tell you, make sure your will is in place. Make sure if there's anything you need to tell your wife or your husband, tell them quickly. If there's something, if you need to reconcile, because they hope that you would not live long. Because we deteriorate our health, we deteriorate our bodies. Number four, the fourth dimension of prosperity is now called financial prosperity. That's what we now call prosperity. Can you see that's only one over four? Financial prosperity. Let me define for you what financial prosperity is. The absence of lack, the absence of poverty, alongside the negative effects that come with them financial prosperity is the absence of lack is the absence of poverty poverty there not just meaning lack of money but the capacity to be productive so you are financially prosperous to the degree to which you have no lack in your life to the degree to which you have the availability of financial resources alongside the capacity to be fruitful and to replenish. This is a word we are going to be dealing with, I hope. You are not truly wealthy if you do not know how to replenish, even if you are fruitful. Replenish is where the mastery of wealth comes from. Fear of money leaving you dies when you can replenish. Many corrupt people are not afraid of giving money because there is a corrupt system of replenishing. I can give you 10,000. I can give you 100,000 because I know how I can sign in a way that it will come back. You only fear things leaving you when you don't know how it will come back again. 
you know that God built our system in circles. There is the hydrogen circle. There is the water circle. Are we together now? Circles. There is rainy season in Nigeria, dry season. It is a system of replenishing. So you can have confidence that by this time, this will happen again. Predictability to your life. The name is called replenish. You will fear money leaving your business. You will fear money leaving your life. When you are only fruitful, it's good to be productive, but if you stop there, you may not do much. You can get to a financial equilibrium where as money is going, money is coming to the point where your harvest overtakes even your seed sowing. Replenish. May that be so for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last dimension of prosperity very quickly is called relational prosperity. Relational prosperity. Is God speaking to us already? Relational prosperity. Relational prosperity. What does that mean? The health of your relationship. Be fruitful means be relational. Because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. Everything. It is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that provides an advantage for you in this kingdom. It is your relationship with God that even secures your eternal destiny. It's your relationship with the devil that destroys your life and destroys everything about you. Relationships are very, very important. At the end of your life, there are things that are very important. One of it is your relationships. They define your possibilities in this life. Like Pastor was sharing uh, before I came up that I, I say it this way, that all blessings come from God through men to men. That means that if God says yes and a man says no, the yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. It will never manifest as yes in your life. It takes both the spirit and the bride for the word to come. The spirit says prosper. The bride must agree with the spirit and say prosper too. Otherwise, prosperity will not come. God can say be healed. But if there is no man to administer that healing, the healing will remain in the realm of the spirit. You need to understand that men are very important. This is the world of men. Now, this is why church people miss it. We believe in God. Wonderful. But we reject men to the detriment of our rising. Politicians understand this. Non-Christian on. <laughs> They understand this you know i always give this example what would make a man fly from the u.s ladies and gentlemen and come into nigeria abuja or lagos to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a wealthy man's a wealthy man's two-year-old baby is the baby the man's friend why fly a private jet go through that rigor while he's flying there are people say sir i'm still waiting for you and he ignores all of them ask jesus who cancel crusades to meet with certain men he was on his way going for a crusade and he meets a man who is a man of influence. His relationship with that man could liberate others. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I've changed. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus did not hide the importance of men. He would finish ministering to thousands of people and then he would be with one person or a group of people. It's only in church that we ignore people and we ignore them to our detriment one man can give a recommendation you can leverage on his influence and your prayer point of decades can be answered in a moment in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters is god speaking to us yes. notice we're not even talking of business we're not talking of these are the foundational truths that we must have so when you are saying i am prosperous you know what you are saying my relationship with god is intact i continue to contend for a superior belief system my health and my physical well-being is all right my finances are doing well and then i have quality relationships indeed you are prosperous if you have four over five you are not there now show me those without god and grade them by this understanding and then you see that you are admiring wrong people just because you saw the fourth key the fourth dimension so lavish in their lives most of them are afraid 
they don't know who trusts them. I mean, they don't know who to trust. They don't even know who can kill them. They live with charms. They live with all kinds of things. No, he gives his beloved sleep. If I stop here this night, believe me, you have gotten something to go back home with. So that the next time someone says, I stopped coming to church because I got a job. You tell him, ah, I grade you now. I came to church and I was taught how to grade. You are not prosperous. You only have one over four. Or I just got a grant or whatever. 10 million naira. I don't need anybody to teach me again. Everything that is not represented in your mind and is in your hand will leave you. It's a law. It's a spiritual law. Everything is built twice. If, it's, if it appears only in your hand, you only held a rubber ring, you will go back. No matter how long it looks to stay, it will go back. We don't secure things in our hands. No. We secure things in our mind. So if you do not sustain the belief system that makes for a prosperous life, you will find out that as an individual, you're not doing well. As a corporate organization, you're not doing well. Even though the value that you provide is there, you will still be shocked that things are not going on well. Don't worry, we are coming to issues of value, but just leave that one first. Five levels of prosperity. Can you turn it into a prayer and say, Lord, I want to be complete. I want to be prosperous indeed. Please, everyone pray. This is a very serious conference. God is working on us. You are praying. Don't be tired though. This is a conference. A conference. We'll speak and then we'll pray. Mention the five areas of prosperity. Allow the Holy Ghost grade you. What area have I suffered? What area have I left to suffer? From the time I started pursuing money, as you would say, my spiritual life went down. I have not contended for superior beliefs. My health is deteriorating. For some of you, you are growing spiritually. You are knowing the Lord. You are encountering God, but your finances are suffering. You are still not doing well. One more minute, pray. Scatter Pascata Peleco Toscoto Prodega de Balahasia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now please sit down. Please sit down. What is money? I know that this is a church that is not ignorant as far as understanding money is concerned. Um, is it alright if I bring a bill or a note just to use? I found out that this is a very effective way of making Nigerians understand this definition. No matter who is sleeping, once you bring something up, they understand immediately. This is a hundred dollar bill. Please look up. And can I use you, sir? Any one of you, come.
if i give this gentleman please hold it huh, and lift it up if i give this gentleman it doesn't matter what direction you just hold it <laughs> you like money huh? i will report you to your pastor now watch this if this gentleman is giving this most times we say he has money is that true and he also believes he has money are we together now tear this in pieces in your mind now i, I want want to respect this but just watch this while he's still standing remember he was happy that he has a hundred dollar now tear it drop it on the ground give it back to him what does he have why what suddenly changed you didn't clean anything on it you only altered you just tore this in six or seven places and still put it back shouldn't he be happy that you even made it easier for me to put it in my pocket so the act of just tearing this suddenly frustrates this man is this really powerful then what sort of value is this that the moment i tear it i can't do anything with it again take the ton money to someone in a shop and say i i this is not fake money i just have a careless child who while i was maybe using the restroom the child thought that this was a piece of paper and he was tearing it and said mommy see you think the shop person will say i understand you know children no he will politely dismiss you brothers and sisters understand i'm leading you somewhere what is it about this that gives you confidence one moment and just because something happened to it you become insecure immediately now what if you have 20 of this and then you set it on fire and it burns can you carry the ashes to cbn and say i'm an innocent nigeria what happened is that my gas at gas i don't know how this thing works listen if you do not understand the accurate concept of money you will live a very insecure life so if my confidence is because this is in my pocket, I'm in trouble. Notice when you leave your house without it, you quickly run back. It has the power to send you back to your house. And you pick it and put it and say, my soul, find rest. You left your house without it. And you were not confident again. So my, also, I'm sorry. The moment I give you this, don't talk to me like that. What are you saying? what is it about this thing that seems to give you so much confidence and then at the same time withdraw that confidence again this is a deliverance service happening here <laughs> ah, goodness so this gentleman because he has this he may not rest again. The moment he sees me, he thinks I'm aware that he has this. So he will hide it. Look what is happening to his emotions. Just because there is a piece of paper. The paper does not talk. Yet look at the evil it is doing to you. Now listen carefully. I'll tell the person, please can you help me with And he, he is fighting a piece of paper in your pocket. Controlling your life relocating you from one region to the other that piece of paper forces you to get a visa whether you like it or not this piece of paper forces you to marry somebody whether you want the person or not this piece of paper as innocent as it looks what then is money money more than just a system look up please there are three things you need to understand about god and the way he designed this system for you to understand money number one you have to understand time number two you have to understand the reward system of the kingdom number three you have to understand the concept of destiny if you do not understand these three things you can never really understand money the primary assignment of financial resources 
primarily the primary assignment of money is for time redemption and efficiency listen carefully not <laughs> not houses and all of that the primary assignment of money is as a tool to help you redeem time and as a tool to make you efficient that means that if you ever claim to have money and you are not able to use it to redeem time and your life does not become efficient you did not use it well more than just a system of rewarding value and that is another valid definition too why because god designed us to live in the the economic system of the kingdom thrives on a reward system are we together now yes so this is a means of settlement a means of appeasal the international banks across the world some of them are called banks of settlement a psychological word in a financial institution why because it is a system of appeasal the secret to peace is justice so if i believe that i this is a hundred dollars for instance look at this if i give you this i expect you to give me something that i consider a value that matches it a reward if you do not give me this then something is wrong we can't have peace because there is no justice so money is a tool that helps you to it's a system of appeasal and settlement are we together i'll be teaching you that one of the ways to live a peaceful life is to be rich listen it's going to be difficult to truly live a peaceful life if you are not rich jesus taught us how to be peaceful he said give to caesar every time you are serving god caesar is going to come and his assignment is the tribute so he says if you want to live in peace there are things that belong to caesar don't argue make sure while you are preaching caesar's tribute is, is there so that when he comes you will give to him when you can give to caesar what belongs to caesar and to god what belongs to god you become a peacemaker i'm taking these concepts sorry for my going around with you like this it will give value when we begin to discuss a number of things and when preachers come here it will not just be i want to prosper i need a car i'm tired of trekking that definition is not deep enough to sponsor conviction the bible says redeem the time that means anything that stops you from redeeming the time is making you disobedient you must fight it there is only one reason why i hate poverty i hate poverty not because it's from the devil i hate poverty because of its effect if poverty were neutral i won't have a problem with it i hate poverty because of its effect to kingdom come to my life and to living are we together yes. time redemption so if i can trek for five hours and i can have a car that turns five hours to 10 minutes what did i do i redeemed time and if while i am in that car i have the privilege to be comfortable and to think well that is time redemption plus efficiency now it gives me the authority and the audacity to buy a good car without feeling guilty because i have i am sponsored by a higher motivation a motivation that is greater than proving a point there is a kingdom motivation so i don't feel sorry for buying a good car society this our world makes you feel guilty for prospering you prosper god lifts you you owe people explanations i'm giving you comfort by the word are we together money is not just a means of exchange of value that is a very professional financial definition but more than that money is a tool one of the most effective tools for time redemption is money you can outsource the services of others to help you to be efficient you have only 24 hours 
and the load in your life needs more than 24 hours so every time god brings this to your hands what he's doing is not just making you look down on others it's his way of helping you to live a very efficient life let me tell you you don't know how efficient your life can be until god truly prospers you many troubles in our families can be rounded up in one week one week of peace and settlement are you in agreement now but the trouble that lingers there can remain for decades you ask me to come and speak i hope i hope i hope we're all right praise the name of the lord leave business we are coming there leave value leave investments don't worry your pastor is a veteran in these areas if your motivation is soiled you will be so frustrated you will be engaging the motions and not know why you are doing what you are doing god is helping us to live very wise and efficient lives because the unit of destiny is time and whatever you give your time to you have given a portion of your life do you know spending the rest of your life looking for money is a cost? Are you aware of that? I, I don't mean to insult your pedigree, but it's true. To spend money is a tool that you should have, just like anointing. Then use it to do something. If you spend your life having it, what is left for you to... You, you see that now? Money was never designed to be a lifelong pursuit. There should be a time T when God grants you grace, like your decree like whatever it is then you can now use it if you become wealthy at 80 you become wealthy at 90 it's not a testimony not to you not to anybody jesus finished his assignment at 33 and we have remained benefactors of the speed on his life you know there is a course in africa that i'm hoping in the course of this conference will break is the cause of late achievement when a young man prospers at 22, 23, people say, no, 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 something is wrong. Abroad, you find people in, in their teens. I mean, with the dignity of kingdom integrity. You buy a first car at 40, 50 days, it's all right. You know, that's how we are. While I'm speaking, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Choose. Remember we, we, how we started this lecture? That you write down the things that lack of financial resources have caused to you. What then is the pathway to wealth? Seeing that our lives are, can be messed up by the absence of this and can be made efficient by the presence of this. Let me just balance another fallacy and then we'll discuss a few things no matter how much time i have will work the fallacy is believing that spirituality will automatically on its own translate into wealth and abundance that gives you stability it's a very well-intentioned truth but it's destructive that just because i have a healthy relationship with the lord jesus christ i love him with all my heart i'm a prayer warrior God forbid that I suffer. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. In the name of Jesus and the name of honesty, if you do not understand the dimensions of the kingdom, excelling in one aspect of the kingdom does not replace another. He said, I will give you keys, not a key. A house has many doors. If you have the key to the kitchen alone, if you are hungry, good for you. But if you need to use the restroom, and it is only the key to the kitchen you have, you are still in the house, but you will see how inefficient, how inefficient you will be. You do well in that house to the degree to which you have the keys to all the doors. If you have visitors and it's only the key to the restroom you have, do you put them there? No. So just to say I am in the kingdom and I have a key, a key of prayer or a key of spirituality, it will not automatically, no, Listen, I love Jesus, so I'm a man of prayer. I'm a man of signs and wonders. I didn't come from a background that taught us this. 
he didn't give us this balance and thank god for bridging it early enough we would have been paying the price today and making nations to pay the price there are implications to ignoring other dimensions of the kingdom you are not the only one who will go down you will punish generations are we blessed for many years we were told that you forget about all these nonsense people who are carnal. You just focus on God and see if he will disappoint you. Ah, I know people today, some of them wonderful contemporaries in ministry. Have you seen people go to pray and then they walk around for three hours? You think they are praying. They are thinking the bills are killing them. We have children loitering around our society today. Children that come from Christian homes, but because they ignored this dimension, they trivialized it. Let me tell you this. You know how Satan attacks people? He studies what you know and what you don't know. Then he builds the system of attack out of your ignorance. The Bible says no weapon fashioned. Weapons don't just come. They are fashioned through study. Oh, he notices that your, your theology is imbalanced. He can't attack you in the area of fasting. He can't make you backslide because you are passionate. You've gotten the key there. So he will come to the areas you have ignored and build a system of attack from it. Most of our ladies that go into prostitution, is it with poor men? Please talk to me in the name of honesty. The hotels that they keep them, do you pay for it for nothing? With it for nothing? Some of you are in ministry here. It's until recently God began to correct that narrative. You go and carry somebody who is a preacher and take to your father. And they say, okay, my friend, what are you doing? I said, well, the Lord called me. I'm, you know, I'm a co-laborer with God and so on and so forth. Now watch this. For a long time, it was like a scar, a demeaning scar to call upon the name of the Lord. When did answering the call become a cause? The people are sincere. They look at you and say, what, what is the meaning of what do you do? Say, I serve God. What does that mean? Listen, God can be speaking to the lady. This is the man I've appointed for you. But poverty can change that prophecy and take that lady into the hand of a, a, a devil somewhere. And we keep watching and say it does not matter. Please, for the sake of your children, listen to what I'm telling you. You ignore what I'm telling you you will pay the price some of you here you are in this city right now i don't mean to make you feel sad i i, I hope you understand that i'm not you, you get what I'm, I'm saying as you are seated right now your loved ones are waiting for you by any means to learn this thing and come to them because they are absolutely clueless about what to do with their lives let's be sincere with ourselves this is more than an issue of car and house. It's a matter of life and death. There are people today who have gone to the grave, pastor, who had no business going there. Poverty took them like an usher, ushered them from earth to another realm. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.